the author of the ABCs of Inclusion and the parent of a special needs child. My son Cooper was born deaf and he was the inspiration behind writing this book. And today I have with me Veronica Arvidsson and Rachel Goldberg, both parents of special needs children as well. Each school has a specialization and from a staffing standpoint, I can see why they would do that. You have the kids with de uh, like uh, autism at one school, kids with behaviors at one school, and kids with developmental delays at another school because you want to specialize for those kids, which makes perfect sense. It was a huge blow up in our house when we found out that Isla was going to a different school than her brother. She was devastated. She was thinking she was going to ride the bus with her brother and do all this stuff. We called the principal everything. They had never had a kid there with Down syndrome in the 15 years that principal's been there. And all I could think of is 200 kids times 15 years that have never had a kid with Down syndrome in their class. That's a huge disservice to the typical kids in that school. When I feel like that would just benefit all kids of mm -hmm. special Absolutely. needs seeing more different special needs, you know, mm -hmm. ha making friends with children who have different special needs mm -hmm. than you. Touching on dance is kind of a good segue into how community and like extracurricular activities as a whole, um, what do you guys think, what have your experiences been there? It's been hard for us. Tessa was also in dance uh, for a couple years and we had to leave it um, because she couldn't keep up with the dances the other kids were doing. I did bring to them, what if we created a class for specific mm -hmm. special needs children and unfortunately they just didn't have the time or the resources at that time. Uh, so she's in singing and she's been in music since she was in kindergarten so that's kind of all she really does right now um, but I would love to see some of the community members step up and create some classes for kids with special needs because um, we would be all for that. This is when I've always had a problem with separating kids and sports by age. Because mm. it's not, I mean, you should really like... Ability. Ability. Yeah. Because it doesn't, I mean, then everybody can kind of do the same, like, can, they're at the same level. Mm. I, don't, I don't know why that's not a thing. It Anybody? A thing. It should be a thing. <laughs> it should be a thing. <laughs> As far as local you know, resources and support, I know we mentioned that there's obviously areas for improvement there, but what, what have you guys found that has been helpful? So there's a really great nonprofit called the Windmill Project. Um, so them. they have uh, free and low cost events um, that we try and go to as much as we can, and they've been an awesome community and resource for us. Being able to, like with the strollers or wheelchairs stuff, being able to get in and out of going to places like that, um, having accessible parking that isn't just one parking one, spot. One handicapped spot. One handicapped <laughs> spot. There are more than one. You never realize how horrible wood chips are yeah. until you have to push a stroller through it <laughs> it's the worst. or a wheelchair. And it's technically ADA accessible playgrounds only have to have like one accessible thing. Again, it, you have one thing for one kid to play with, that's ridiculous. Again, like having it be accessible to everyone benefits everyone. If a kid is too scared to go up the tall ladder, if they can go up the ramp right. because they're too scared to climb the ladder, then that kid can use the slide too, disabled or not. So I don't know, again, it costs so much money. Anything with the label of like accessible is outrageous. Mm -hmm. Just look up an adaptive stroller one time and then you'll <laughs> scream. Or an adaptive bike. Oh God. Yeah. I, I wonder, could we do like an hour or two before the event or after the mm -hmm. event, have it be you know, more inclusive mm -hmm. to the families who need the extra parking, who need the extra time yep. to do that and not being made feel like, okay, we have to hurry up, there's yep. a yeah. line waiting, to yep. feel the guilt of, of that. Kind of a good transition to into like what, what you can do to make sure that um, your kid's siblings are educated but also you know don't feel like they always have to be a voice um obviously for me cooper's my only child so we haven't really navigated that yet but you guys both do have other kids for us tessa's our middle child so she has an older brother and a younger sister and from our experience having seeing them with tessa is making them the most empathetic caring individuals I just, I find it so amazing to watch my other two children and what they've gotten out of being a sibling who has special needs. And it's you can so see great. how that can translate 
to other kids. They get yeah. the benefit of having that experience the of growing kindness. up. Yep, the yeah. empathy, all that stuff. Yeah. I've seen our friends' kids benefit. I just even outside our immediate family, <laughs> outside of cousins, just friends in general, that kids just absolutely love her and they are benefiting from knowing her. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. Just so infectious. I know. I'm like, yeah. why can't we make it all? Like, we can do this. Yeah. That's what's the only thing that's keeping me like, we gotta make yeah. this happen.